I'm Anthony. And I'm Eric. And this is LA Rams Central, episode 99. So a few reasons why I want to post this show today. Um, and I want to just post this actually a while ago. After reading you guys' comments, which me and Eric were both very touched by, we made a decision to continue the NFL version of the show. So we will continue that. We will do two shows a week. Um, we'll do an NFL show. We're not going to recap all the games like we did last time or last year. We're going to recap basically three games each. Um, the Rams and the Bears are going to be one game that we each cover, so I'll probably cover the Rams. He'll cover the Bears. We'll give our input. We're going to pick two games other than those that we want to cover. So we're each going to cover the Rams and Bears. That's a given. And then there's going to be two other games each that we're going to cover. Eric's going to pick two. I'm going to pick two. Sometimes Eric may pick the Steelers because he doesn't have a soul and he likes the Steelers. And then other times, because I'm dumb, I'm going to pick the Browns. But other than that, we're going to try to keep it pretty much open to what we felt were the two best games on TV or that were played that week. So guys, look, if it's a 1 in 14 matchup, a 1 in 14 team versus a 2 in 14 or versus a 2 in 13 team, if it was a good football game, we're going to give it credence. Uh, and then obviously we'll do our standings and things like that. So the NFL show is going to be probably between, I'm not going to say what time, it, because me and Eric never obliged by the time, but we're going to make sure that we at least get those covered, and then we'll talk about some of the other games or some of the other things. Does that sound fair, e? That sounds great. I mean, interesting just think, too, right, if you guys want us to uh, you know, cover a game in, in the division, like you want us to cover the Seahawks or the 49ers or, or the Cardinals, let us know like the, uh, the week prior, because in this way, We'll know kind of what to uh, watch out for. I mean, you know, Seattle's going to take a step back. Cardinals are going to take a step back. The 49ers might take a step up, and you guys might want to hear a little bit more about them, especially maybe with the Rams on the docket or something like that yeah. coming up. So, you know, if, if that interests you, um, and maybe they played a great game the week before, and you, you want to, you know, have us hash out a little bit more with what they're doing, you know, let us know because we'll, uh, we'll definitely um, adhere to that request. Yeah, for sure. And the other the other show that we're going to do is obviously going to be the college football show. Um, the way I figured we'll do it is every week we'll wrap up what we think the top 25 should be. Um, that'll be kind of the wrap-up part of the show. Sorry, my beard's gotten out of control. I need to shave. Um, but we'll also cover, you know, a couple of key games and, and, and talk about, you know, some of the, some of the things uh, that we want to cover. For the 100th episode, we're going to give a little sneak peek on that, and we're going to talk about the Urban Meyer situation a little bit um, in conclusion of the 100th episode because uh, I have an opinion on that that may or may not surprise some of you. Um, but I still think it, it, it bears being talked about, for sure, with it being news. Um, anything else you want to add to that? Hey, let me try that again in English. It is the preferred language of the most of the viewers. Um, and I don't even know what that was. D is there anything else you'd like to add, Eric? Uh, you know, as long as um, we hit on all the uh, important topics and and even with the college show, I mean, it's, all, it's not always going to be about number one Alabama. No. Pretty much is going to be number one all year. Um, or you know, the best team in the NFL, whoever that may be, week in and week out, you know, we're going to try to have a, we're, we're, we're going to try to expand our watching and talk about other teams as well, both shows combined. Agreed. Okay. So, a couple things that I want to talk about. Uh, first of all, Aaron Donald's still not signed. Uh, get your head. Uh, but close. But close. Okay. Should be done. This is stupid. Should, be, should have been done. Should have been done a year and a half ago. Agreed. But I'm glad it's close. I haven't heard anything. So Eric, you just made my day. Um, I, I I've heard it's close for the last couple of weeks. I guess they're just trying to get through some of the other uh, language in the contract. I have no idea what is what is being discussed or, or negotiated or anything. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure he wants, I'm sure he wants a clause in there that says that at least once in the two meetings, he's allowed to step on Garoppolo's face, um, which I'm for, by the way, I think that's a good move. Um, 
He's got a face I mask. Just, I, thought, I, thought, I thought you'd rather say Russell Wilson, but that's another No, Gar- Garoppolo is – look, the Seahawks, th- their thing is over. They were a blip on the radar, and we didn't even struggle with them anyway. Like, we were the one team they couldn't beat even when we sucked and they were good. So now that we're good and they suck, it's going to be a laughing stock. But I will tell you, 49ers are always going to have a special place in my uh, butthole. Um, so, <laughs> sorry guys, I'm back. All right. Anywho, speaking of, um, buttholes, let's talk about NFL network, shall we? No. All right. So Eric, did you, have you been paying attention to what the, um, not so experts have been saying about, um, Josh Allen and, Baker Mayfield. Uh, all I heard was that Josh Allen looked like crap, and that Baker Baker Mayfield looked good, and of course Tyrod Taylor got injured again. Jesus. And then came back in in a preseason yeah. game. Yeah. But that's none of my business. Well, look, we'll get into that because the Rams seem to have a solution. I don't know if I'm a fan of it or not, but it's definitely something very different and innovative. There's a couple things here that I want to mention. I, I think Baker Mayfield has looked good. Um, but it's the pre friggin season. Can we please, can we please stop with this? You know, I had to listen for an entire off season about how Jared Goff was one of the worst quarterbacks that ever lived because he had a poor seven games. I watched all seven games. I felt like he played actually quite honestly, very well. I thought he lit it up against new Orleans and I thought he was putting the ball on the money in cold weather at new England, except his, receivers looked like they were playing high school football and didn't know how to catch a ball if it was handed to them. And in, for example, in Tavon Austin's case, Goff literally did hand him the ball and the dumb, re- Ooh, I almost said something I shouldn't have. The exceptionally terrible athlete that was formerly known as Tavon Austin proceeded to drop the football when he handed it to him. So I had to endure that. And then last year he lights it up and they're like, oh, I'm still not sure about that Jared Goff. But then they turn around and they want to anoint Baker Mayfield. Now, I hope Baker Mayfield turns out to be a good football player. I always root for these guys coming out of college. And I think he will be a good football player. I just don't understand why these experts keep setting these expectations so ridiculously high. I think, let me give you an example. Can you name the last quarterback? Can you name this quote? What quarterback said this quote his rookie year in the preseason? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. So he said, there are two things that I didn't anticipate about the NFL game that I'm learning slowly. The speed of the game is way faster than I'm prepared for at the moment. And the windows are so significantly smaller That if I don't work on my accuracy, I won't be in this league much longer. Do you know who that was? Uh, Still in the league now or retired? Still in the league now, considered an elite quarterback. I'll give you that. Ooh. Ooh. Um, I have two guys in mind that I'm probably wrong on both, but I'm going to say either Rodgers or Brady. You got it right the first time, Aaron Rodgers. That was Aaron Rodgers' rookie year when he was asked about his first preseason performance where he was he was offensive, not offensive. Um, you know, I don't get it. I, I don't get why when somebody comes out and says the speed of the game is really a lot, that all of a sudden that means the kid's not ready to play football and he should never play football ever again. And well, I'm telling you right now... Well, look, at it, look at his situation, too. He also, he also uh, tutored behind one of the best quarterbacks ever put, put, you know, throw the football. He did. So he was behind him. He was behind him for three to four years. So, you know, I know their relationship wasn't great, and a lot of it has to do with both, with both guys' egos. But mainly, mainly the uh, one that went into the Hall of Fame a year or two ago. Um, but like, like I, I don't know why. Like some of these guys who know that they're not going to always play, who know they're not going to play football for the rest of life, why they just don't take these guys under the wing? I just don't. I just don't understand. Mainly because I, I haven't been in that position. 
right. um, and you'd want to help. You'd want to, you know, tutor, and you want you want to learn as much as you can. And this why this is why you know rookies who come into the league and sit for the first year, maybe even two, um, end up being really good. I mean, okay, so you had you know Peyton Manning who went three and thirteen his first year, and then he turned it around. I mean, that comes with experience. The Colts had nobody else, right? So, you know, there are there are there are exceptions to the rule, but man, sit behind and enjoy it and learn the process and, and, and whatnot. And, you know, the game will come to you eventually. Look, I, I'm gonna tell you right now, what impresses me about Josh Allen and why I liked him coming out of the draft is his ability to throw the ball in cold weather, which is usually going to be your location come postseason time. His ability to take punishment and the fact that he's I've said this before, the fact that he's a country boy. I could name you the last four quarterbacks that have been country bumpkins. Now you tell me how good they were. Are you ready? Yeah. Brett Favre. Stunk. Yeah, stunk. Jim McMahon. Never heard of him. Yeah, never heard of him. <laughs> Terry Bradshaw. Who? He's such a dork. And Johnny Unitas. Way before, way before football even threw it Yeah, there. here we go. What's the moral of the story? Country boys are 4-0 and when it comes to being Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Uh, well, three of them, at least. No, whatever. I mean, yeah, McMahon's not a Hall of Famer, but he won a Super Bowl. He did. So, so the other ones. Exactly. So I think there's something to be said there. Um, that when you come from that part of the world... You don't have a choice but to work hard or you're going to stay on the farm the rest of your life. It's like the inner city black athlete. It's the same situation for them. They better work hard to get the heck out of Dodge. Right? right. So, you know, I just don't understand this. They're so eager to be right about the draft pick that they don't even let the process happen. It just bugs the crap out of me. Anyway, I can... Well, you know... Here's the thing with Buffalo. I mean, Andy Dalton Jr. will be the quarterback the next time uh, Buffalo makes the playoffs. So, I don't, you know, I don't know what they're Dude, doing. Dude, I have to say, was that not the coolest thing you've ever seen, though? I mean, he got a bigger ovation than if he was in Cincinnati. Dude, I'm telling you, man, I, I have so much respect for the Bills fans. They get this game. Like, they they get it. And, and to give the guy that got them there that kind of ovation... Andy Dalton will eat in Buffalo for free for the rest of his life. He will. He will. Um, but what he needs to do is, you know, get Cincinnati there and win a, win a playoff team or two. Well, look, I've said this and I'll say it again. For those of you that don't know, Andy Dalton, prior to Jared, Jared Goff coming in, was my favorite quarterback in the NFL, bar none. It's not even close. He's now number three. It's Jared Goff, Josh Allen, and Andy Dalton. I like Andy Dalton. I've always liked Andy Dalton. Eric, you can verify this. You got an organization that didn't get, wasn't able to get to back-to-back playoffs in their history but one time in 81 and 82, and that was because of the strike short in season. This guy led him there, what, five years in a row? Yep. You know, and I'm sorry, but I don't buy that, oh, he has to be the reason to win. How about Burfett, Bur- Burfett whatever his name is, the, the douche canoe from Arizona State, how about that guy, I don't know, acts like a human being in the final two minutes of a football game and actually gets his team the victory that they had friggin' wrapped up? Oh, I don't know. How about Chad Ochocinco actually catches two touchdown passes against the Jets instead of drops him in the corner of the end zone when he's supposedly a Pro Bowl wide receiver, one of the elite ones in the game? Like, everybody forgets those moments. Like, somehow Andy Dalton's supposed to rifle the ball into between three defenders then run over there really quick and catch the football too? I never agreed with putting that much pressure on a quarterback. Jared Goff looked spectacular against Atlanta. Spectacular. They didn't lose the game because of him. So, it bugs the pee out of me. But I digress. I want to wrap this up with well, a talk. Really, really quick. Go ahead. Before you do, um, just to... Uh Piggyback off your point about the NFL Network with Josh Allen and, and um, uh, Baker Mayfield, you should you should hear the uh, talk out of Chicago on uh, local radio and, and TV. Is that um, the Bears played no starters in their last preseason game against the Chiefs, which they ended up winning by a touchdown, 
And then everything about after that was, oh, well, you can't charge a full price ticket for, for a preseason game if, you know, the starters aren't going to play. It's preseason. A lot of starters don't play. Look, Todd Gurley's not even played, but I don't blame him that he's not playing in the preseason. You're and actually. Why would, you take, like, why, why would you take unnecessary hits, especially as a running back? Look, with all, with all the. Uh, with all the new uh, helmet rules and targeting rules and all this crap that they that they want to uh, enforce, and I don't know how much they're going to enforce once the regular season begins, but Marquise Lee, perfect example. Can't hit him high, flag, so you hit him low, out for the year, torn ACL. Yeah. Well, eventually they're going to ban. Eventually, eventually, Eric, they're going to. Eventually, they're going to ban tackling low too. Well, where are you going to hit the guy? That's the point. Exactly. Put a flag on him. My here's my solution. It's where it's going. I'm telling you, the new the next CBA is going to be a real mess, and that's going to be in three years. I'm Here, telling you right now. Well, it, it may be that we don't cover the NFL in a year or two anyway because it's a dead sport. Look, this is this is how easy it is to fix the concussion lawsuits, the you know player safety concerns. Are you ready? Are you ready? You hold up their contract and you say, do, do you understand that this game has risks? Do you still want $100 million? Go ahead and sign here, please. Okay. Now you can't sue us because you know the risks. It's that easy. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want the risk. Don't play the game. No one's putting a gun to your head saying, play football or die. Like, no one's doing that. Either play and understand the risks that come with it. I still think. That that the concussion situation, I'm sorry, I'm even more convinced now that it's linked to steroids. Did you see the hit that the Giants tight end took? Uh, Evan Ingram? Yeah. No, that no. was one of the weakest helmet to shoulder pad hits I think I've ever seen. And the dude went out? Dude, lay off the roids for 10 seconds and see what your body can do naturally. Just saying. Like, a dude fell and hit his head. He got tripped up. This happened, I cannot remember if it was this preseason or last. But the dude got tripped, right? The guy ankle tackled him. He stumbled forward and his head hit the, hit the turf and he was on concussion protocol for a week. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It's hard for me to take this seriously when that's the outcome. So you hold up the contract and you say, there are risks. Do you understand that there are long-term risks? Do you understand what CTE does to you? Do you still want a million dollars or a hundred million dollars? Okay, sign please. And then you tell them, 80s rules are back. Hit them wherever the hell you want. Play football. Sorry, I'm not concerned about player safety. I know that sounds cold. Because so many other people made it through this sport with no issues. They didn't have player safety. When I played, when I played, you could hit underneath the helmet, drive the face mask off the helmet. The helmet could fly off. You could get piled on by two more guys. You pick your helmet up, you put it back on your head, and you get back in the huddle, and that's no problem. So, I'm sorry, this athlete isn't any better than the athlete in the past. And if I'm being paid $100 million, it's worth the risk. You think the scaffold worker, the guy that has to go up there on 25-year-old equipment that's harnessing, his, harnessing him and keeping him from falling to his death, do you think they have worker safety in mind? The guy falls to his death, they pay him out, and they're like, sorry, next scaffolder, please. Welcome to the real world. What about boxing? There's no player safety in boxing. You're getting to the face. No issues, no concussions, no problems. Have you ever been hit by an 8-ounce fist? You got a fist in an 8-ounce glove punching you in the face. Where? In the face, <laughs> right? Swells the eye, swells the cheeks, breaks bones. No concussions. MMA. Do we want to talk about MMA? Where you literally have to knock the guy out 
or make him tap. By the way, when you get knocked out, it's an auto, auto grade five concussion. That's the highest level you can get. When you lose consciousness, that is instantly a grade five concussion. Boxing and MMA all the time. No one has a problem with it. You think they have player safety in wrestling? And you could tell me it's fake, but when you fall off a 25-foot ladder on a thumbtacks, that can only be so fake, right? When you right. fall into a table that breaks in half and has metal rods on the side of it, you're going to feel it. Concussions and injuries happen all the time. Where's the safety there? Chair to the back of the head. Hockey. Hockey hits harder and more consistently, and they're on ice, which means they're going 10 miles an hour faster than the fastest NFL football player. No concussions. No issues. They have concussions. Not as frequent. Back too. Oh, yeah. Arena football doesn't have this problem or didn't. So it can only be steroids, people. It is the only common link. Boxers have to make weight. They can't afford to go on roids. Wrestlers, they do go on roids all the time. And concussion and back injuries and all kinds. They have all kinds of problems. But they're not trying to you know, wrestler safety, MMA. Again, they're trying to make weight. I don't think a lot of those guys are on steroids. But the NFL, they're juicing for fun. But, you know, we're supposed to believe that, you know, CTE is only in football. So, whatever. And for, for God's sake, eliminate the turf. If they really want player safety, eliminate artificial turf. It's bad for the knees, it's bad for the head, it's bad for the back, it's bad for the body. Do away with it. Grass has always been proven to be safer. Does anybody really have artificial turf anymore? Dude. I mean, you got the field turf, that's one thing. Hey, I've coached, I've coached on that stuff, and I understand that they have rubber pellets, and I understand that the grass is soft, but at the end of the day, it's still pavement underneath all of that crap. It's not dirt. So, yeah, we'll see if the knee injury problem continues. But field turf, it's not natural grass. So it doesn't give when it should give, which means your knee goes bye bye Or you get rolled up on, and because your leg can't give way, you're done. It goes bye-bye like Wendell Davis' knees. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, Google it. Oh, please don't. Please don't. Please don't. That was horrible. Uh, horrible? That was horrible, I said. Horrible. Horrible. Yeah. No, it's it's ridiculous. I just, I'm done with it, E. Anyway, I want to talk about this to wrap up the show. The Rams are doing something that is actually innovative. They're not playing any of their starters this preseason. I don't want to give my two cents on this yet. I want you to. Go ahead. on how many years you've been in the game, what position you play, not having a new head coach, I think all factors into it. And I think with head coaches like Sean McVay, and I'm going to throw Matt Nagy in here because he played Trubisky in preseason game number two, uh, technically three, because they played the Hall of Fame game. But he played, they played him for a uh, quarters maybe so half mm-hmm. um, you know his focus isn't on the preseason okay wins and losses do not matter in the preseason the one thing that matters to me wholeheartedly and I think it would it, would, it means a lot to a lot of other people as well is injuries Marquis Lee helmet to the knee done for the year okay that's just one in in in, the, in a long line of injury in the preseason. Yeah. Is preseason too long? I don't know. But when you start getting into, you know, game four, game five, especially if you play that uh, Hall of Fame game, listen, you're you're asking for more hits, more exposure. Same this for the regular season. I would rather see a guy play his heart out and get injured in the regular season than, you know, pull up and get hit and be out for the year in the preseason. So, I'm on board with the whole not playing, you know, if you don't have to. Um, I think, you know, if you're a rookie, 
uh, I think you should get it, you know, some touches, whether it's quarterback or whatever position you play, it doesn't matter. You, you need that exposure. You need to play the game to see how fast it moves for you. And maybe you do that for, for two games at least, you know, game game two and three, and, and you do it next year, game two and three, and then you start, you know, deciding for yourself, hey, is it worth it? And, you know, talk to your head coach because, you know, you're the one who's out there playing and, and you know, putting yourself out there for the team. But you also have to look out for number one, which is yourself as well, and especially the preseason. So, you know, I'm on board with a lot of guys not playing now, like Darnold and Allen and Rosen and, and Mayfield. Uh, I think I think those guys need they need the reps. Yeah. You know, you can only simulate so much in in practice. Uh, so when you get that game experience, I think it's very helpful for them. You know, hey, if you if you look like dog poop, you don't know, learn from it. Watch a video. You know, like what what, what Roger said. You know, you know the game moves quickly. The windows are tighter. Take that. Use that to your advantage. Um, but yeah, preseason. I'm sorry. To me, to me, preseason is one of the most boring uh, aspects of football that's out there right now. Um, and I don't know I don't know why it's different like for for football and I, I, I lump hockey and basketball in there as well. But I think baseball is different. It's just me. I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but uh, and spring training even for baseball is a little, is a little too long at times. Um, but but preseason football, I mean don't don't risk yourself. I guess I'm movable on this issue. When I first started watching football, <laughs> hold on a minute, Jameson. When I first started watching football, I was one of those that believed, "Oh, let them play, let them play. What the heck? They got to play. They've been waiting this whole time." As I got older, I had this idea: Well, you want these guys to be ready for the season. So what you do? is you don't play them in the first preseason game. And then you play them a quarter in the second preseason game. You play them a half in the third preseason game. And you play them three quarters in the fourth preseason game. And you let them go into the NFL fresh and ready with their with their sea legs under them. But then I thought about how long the NFL season is and, and, and the risk of injury and all that. And I really thought, if you really want to look at your rookies, I think the best method that I would have used as a head coach, and again, I'm movable even on this. I thought for the longest time, and, and I'm starting to wonder, as a head coach, what would I do? Well, what I would do is the first preseason game, you'd get a series just to get out there and see somebody new. The second preseason game, you'd play a quarter. The third preseason game, depending on how well you were doing, you'd either play a quarter and a half to two quarters. And then you wouldn't see the field at all the fourth preseason game, and you go into the season with basically a bye week. My concern from a fan standpoint, is that they're going to do away with preseason altogether, which, or at least eliminate it to two, and then put those games into the NFL season, which I, I laugh, and I'm like, player safety, my foot. You're going to put them into high competitive situations with two more games. Now they're playing an 18-game schedule with a bye week somewhere in there. So they're playing 17 games instead of 18 games, you're increasing the gameplay, keeping Thursday night football, and you want to talk to me about player safety. Stick it up your rear end. Right? Right. What I that's from a fan standpoint. I think the more I think about what McVeigh is doing is genius. He's guaranteeing that come week one, he's going to take the field with his best roster. His number one roster. That's a pretty big deal. You always worry about that big injury in the preseason. But let me ask you a question. Because I could tell you the answer to this question is, it doesn't make a difference from a coach's standpoint. And it doesn't make a difference to me as a fan. But I want to know what you think, Eric. Does it really matter to you if Mitchell Trubisky goes down with a knee injury in the second preseason game or the second quarter of the first week of the regular season? Does it matter? It doesn't matter because he's out for the year anyway. Right. Or he's out for however long. However, if he goes down in the preseason, 
then you're always going to wonder, should I have played him? Or you have and two or, extra weeks of or, rehab and healing. Or you have, look, exactly. Exactly what I was about to say. Or you have that couple extra weeks to, to heal from an injury, depending on, again, how long he's out for. Right. Um, the Bears open up at Green Bay. Okay, so he he goes out um, he goes out in the first or second quarter of the Green Bay game. Our backups chase Dan. Good luck. Enough said. Season's over. <laughs> I don't care how good he is. I don't, I don't care if he looks like uh, vintage Joe Montana in in the preseason and he looks like a Hall of Fame preseason quarterback. I don't care. That's we didn't get Chase Daniel to start. No. Well, E, that's all I got. Anything you want to add? No. I, I'm just I'm just looking forward to finally getting real football out here and um, seeing what the Bears are made of, only because, you know, I, I'm excited for the Matt Nagy era and seeing what Trubisky can do. I like the weapons that they have around them. I'm also keeping a close eye on their and Donald situation. Um, I think that's, you know, obviously the Rams need him, I think, more than he needs the Rams, but they need each other. So, you know, it's it, it, it's interesting just to watch and see from a, from a distance. Uh, at least at least uh, Donald and the Rams are talking. Khalil Mack and the Raiders are not talking. Uh, so that's a situation to uh, to watch. I mean, he's losing a ton of money each week, which, yeah. you know, unless he's saved and, and done well for himself, I mean, you know, I don't know how many people can afford to lose how much he's how much he's losing. But you know, some some things like that are interesting. While others watching Donald if he if he reports again before week one or something, or they finally hammer out a deal after this preseason game coming up, whenever. You know, it'll, it'll just be once it's signed and dotted and, and sent into the league office, I mean, everybody can breathe a lot easier. So, Well, on that note, I just want to thank the fans. Uh, you're the reason we're going to keep doing the NFL show. Please spread the word. Let people know. Hopefully those of you that said, well, I'm not going to watch if you don't do an NFL show. You tuned into this episode and you realize we listened. Um, I could care less about doing – an NFL show. If I lose subscribers, I lose subscribers, so to speak. But the fact that I know it means so much to you guys and that this is your outlet for real football talk, um, total football talk, I heard you, and I'll be here. If that's what I can do for you guys, if that's, if that's the little bit of joy that me and Eric can bring into your football experience because it's a game and we all should enjoy it, then that's what we're going to do. And we'll stay true to our word. The the, the politics of it all we're going to ignore um, from this point forward in every single show. Um, I'm done ranting and raving about things I can't control. Well, that's not true. That's a total lie, actually, about political things in football because it doesn't affect me if I don't give it credence, right? There are other things that I think are worth a rant than complaining about social issues or political issues. Yeah, we, we, we can only hammer on the uh, national anthem uh, for so many times before it's beating a dead horse where you get enough Elmer's glue. But if there's something else that happens, we'll touch on it. We'll, we'll get your uh, guys' advice and see what your thoughts are and whatnot, and then, and then it's back to football. But if there's something that's important that we need to touch on, we will. Well, I'll go a step further. This is what I'm going to say. If it's a political issue and you guys really want us to talk about it, then bring it up in the comments and we'll talk about it. Otherwise, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm done talking politics. Politics and football doesn't mix. It's like oil and water. I'd rather talk football, and I know you guys out there would rather hear football. Because we all have a political position. We don't need to hear it. We just need to come together as a ramily, come together as the bare essentials require. I don't know what the bears thing is. Bunch of freaking lunatics out there in Chicago anyway. Just saying. Yeah, yeah. Bear, it will, bears suck. I don't know what to tell you. It's not your fault. Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't got anything for that one. <laughs> for once, I'm actually on the other side. Okay. 
Sorry, Bear fans out there. I know you were expecting more of a comeback than that from Eric. Like, well, we beat you in 85. I got nothing. Yeah, you could only use that one for so long. <laughs> well, you still own the series record, which blows my mind. Anyway, I guess you, I guess one of us will get the last laugh this year. Um, at least for another right. so many years. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. We listened, we heard, and we will continue. So hopefully you guys spread the word and it all goes well. We love you on behalf of the Ramley. I'm Anthony. And I'm Eric. And go Rams!